am. I'm uh, hosting a game uh, of Iron Sword and Blast Delve. Uh, and uh, this is our last session. Uh, we uh, are using three safety tools, open table, uh, which I will take advantage later. Uh, you can get up uh, and leave anytime you like. Um, we are also playing with X card. Uh, you can X any topic that you feel like is uh, not working for you and we will rewind and start again. And lines and veils, all the players have uh, indicated their lines and veils in our safety and resources tab. Those are our three safety tools. Uh, everyone good? Does anyone have any questions about any of those? Fantastic. We will be having a player join shortly, hopefully. Uh, and um, I'm having played with Josh many times, fairly confident that he is up to speed on the safety tools. Um, let's maybe first recap what happened last time. The camera is on, the cat is in. Unbelievable. Uh, so, um, I don't know, Blake, do you want to get us started? What was one thing you remember um, the last time? So, oh, we, we, we found the ship deep in the caves. Yes, we did. And we got giant octopus trying to eat us or rip the ship apart or both. Yes, it did. Um, Nadira grabbed a bunch of the shiny loot while the rest of us, uh, you know, sort of entertained the sh squid and got the hell out of there. Um, yeah. There's all sorts of a, lot, a wide variety of interesting stuff in part of the treasure from, you know, our ancestors. And then we went up and sort of camped, but the, there was like a storm gathering as we went up to the surface and we were just sort of preparing for the journey home, which I'm sure nothing bad will happen. No. Um, hey. Yeah, so Bethany, we decided we would, we would end the adventure, end the delve, and that today's session... Our last session would just be the journey home. It's like that part of fellowship or the part of Return of the King where you're like, oh, I guess there's more story to be had. Yeah, here. yeah. So, um, so uh, we had, we tried detailed combat. Uh, you may remember that we uh, had encountered kind of a rival set of treasure hunters. And uh, we, we came upon them looking through a, a big cave they were examining some of the ruins there and uh we set upon them and ultimately prevailed obviously um however it was touch and go there for a little while i seem to remember sasco being especially useless in this no 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 i got the most useless award i was running shit out so i missed nearly every shot <laughs> I did good against the squid, not against the bandits. Yeah, it was it was nothing short of miraculous. And I think it's only because we were playing a cooperative game that we didn't have a GM being like, well, no. Uh, Joel, any other recollections from last time? Um, I remember that the treasure we found at the end wasn't necessarily like gold and all that stuff but it was like books on medicine and kind of survival and stuff stuff that would like help settlements flourish and oh um we activated one of the iron pillars at the end yes and it kind of like released this uh, chain reverberation to other iron pillars that have kind of started to like change the weather is starting to storm heavily um, stuff like that yes now that you say that I think um, I played a tune and sort of I hit the note that caused the one of the pillars to resonate mm -hmm. and now we're also sort of dealing as you say with the aftermath of like maybe all the pillars were activated and this is gonna make our journey home complicated. Mm -hmm. I remember what else was established. That was pretty good. Yeah, there was, was that um, artifact that the rival um, 
we had kind of established that they were rival mercenaries or like treasure right. hunters slash uh, sl slavers. And it was like an artifact that they were after to like help them in their nefarious plot. Right. Um, I, um, uh, Blake, I'm seeing one other thing that maybe you performed an auger ritual. Uh, yeah, I was talking to the ravens and as the storm was sort of gathering and they sort of, I asked them, you know, how are my kids? And they just said, oh, there's going to be deception on the way home. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but that's usually how it goes. Yeah. Some of the next waypoint is not who they say they are. Deception is on the path ahead of you. So I wonder if we might so Bethany, was that a good recap? Did you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that seems pretty thorough. I probably will have questions about details eventually, but. Well, before we head off on our journey, is there something your character would like to do or should we just get into the, the journey role or? Um, I, I don't think so. Let's just get into the journey role, yeah. Um, well, I remember what my character is doing and what he wants to do you know i think i uh, i'm coming back now i set i i put our journey in the progress tracks journey home if you're looking at the progress tracks tab in our character keeper um line 11 is the journey home and we decided it was formidable which means we're going to make one progress per waypoint Uh, I wonder if we might take a moment and just sort of describe the landscape that we're in. Is it uh, forested? Is it hilly? Is it uh, desolate? I don't know, Joel, do you have any ideas of uh, kind of where we're at? I think it's kind of that, like, I feel like I've seen pictures of it in, like, the Pacific Northwest of, like, very rocky with some trees kind of poking out here and there. Yeah. Uh, you know, like waves crash in on the side, um, salt water in the air. Oh, I think I'd established before, like the cave system had started to cave in. So there's a lot of these sinkholes. So we're kind of having to take this like winding path um, when, you know, before there was a straight shot to the, like the next waypoint. We're kind of having to like wind through these um, dark chasms and then like kind of maybe a little bit more forested areas in between some like sharp jagged rocks on the edge. Yeah, that's good. Um, Beth, are there lots of settlements? Are there one or two like between us and our own town? How many sort of settlements would you imagine between here and there? Uh, I mean, I think it depends on what counts as a settlement. There are a few little clusters of like two or three houses. Uh, and there's one larger settlement by like, you know, 15 houses. I'm going to propose, what do you think, I'll, what do you all think of this, that there is a... Um, the closest thing that uh, there is to a city um, in these parts, but it is sort of, let's call it like five miles out of our way. <laughs> so, you know, on the one hand, it offers us some refuge if things get really bad, but on the other hand, it's pretty far away. Does that sound all right to you all? Are there any... Uh... Um, like giant communities around here. I think that's I think that's the biggest one is what I was imagining, like cool. the very like a very large community, but not kind of on the direct path between here and there. Uh, Blake, anything you want to add? I guess I'm curious as to what sort of creatures might we encounter? Any 
your thoughts? Um, well, might as well say those um, was it Baru, the the, the wolf-like humanoids and stuff. Um, but whether yeah, they might be returning home if the weather's bad, or eagerly watching over the you know from the up on the hills to see if there's interesting prey of some variety to attack while they're confused. But maybe not. They might get caught out in the storm as well. Sorry, just dealing with a technical issue. Give me a second. There we go. Uh, all right, so what are those wolf things called? Uh, Baru, what's it called? Baru, uh, that's right. That's right. Yes, let's come on back. Uh, so we might run into some Baru. Baru. Um, I don't have a good sense. Are we supposed to roll Undertake a Journey now? Do we roll it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Because so we've you know packed up our camp, we're heading off. We're doing um, it. Not sure what you're actually supposed to roll with though. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Roll. Oh, okay. Roll plus wits. Yeah. No, you don't get bonus because we're out in the wilderness. Yeah. I haven't got a dice roller up. Let's uh, look. I'm assuming we would choose one person to kind of like be at the forefront and lead us and do the roll, or do you think we should each roll for this? I think there might be a few rolls, so we could take turns. Okay. I'm going to tag Bethany to do the first one. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay. That's. What's my wits? Two. Oh, looking right at it. There's one or two. I mean, yes. Okay. Cool. By the way, it looks like uh, Josh is not going to join. Whoa. Oops, that was okay. 2d6 or 1d6. 2d10, 1d6, and it's plus two. Whoa. Oh, is yeah. <laughs> that was the lowest I could possibly roll, so. <laughs> well, I mean, the options are the, the storm's kicking our butts. We need to take immediate shelter. We get attacked by Maru. Something else. Um... I know maybe we're not too eager to go underground again, but maybe a sinkhole gets us. I guess, how do we feel about combat? We tried the detailed combat. It was fine. Do we feel like we want to try that again? I would be fine with it because it went quick enough. Yeah. Like it was granular, granular enough where it felt cinematic still but quick enough where it didn't feel tedious to me all right i like the idea of uh, maybe some faru showing up um yeah. maybe maybe we're sort of uh on the edge of a forest and due to a single we need to kind of turn left into the forest uh and as we start making our way through the dark forest I wonder, Keenan, you got the best wits. So I wonder if like you kind of start to do, there's one of those scenes where it's like, we're being tracked. Hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, so I'll be like, you know, quick this way, trying to head to for better cover. Um, so I guess this would be face danger to avoid the fight. Okay, I like it. Um, I'm 100% making too much noise, by the way. Where? What do you mean? I'm doing one of those things. <laughs> okay. Um, expertise, because I've traveled a lot, so I'm going to roll plus wits. Kind of direct. 
two tool. All right, so one of them and two of them. Three. So I need three to that roll. So seven strong hit. Yes, I'd say. But things go a little weird, right? Because of the double tens. Or the double. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I lead, I get enough cover between our, our group and the Varu so that we're not immediately going to have a fight, but something weird happens. Yes. Which means I think I get to roll on my favorite table, which is the plot twist table. God. There are too many tabs. Um, what do we, I don't know, maybe Blake, you can sort of narrate, what do we see when the, we're in our hiding spot and the Varu kind of make their way through? What, what does that look like? Um, ironically, we probably, you know, I direct you amongst the trees and the, and the bigger foliage of the forest and we hide in a wolf's cave and we're sort of, we're watching and we sort of hold some branches in front of us as these wolf-like creatures, but they're more humanoid kind of, and they're stalking by grabbing the trees and sniffing around, but they go further ahead and we'll probably wait a good minute. Um, Sasuke probably goes to use his accordion again and we're like, stop, don't. <laughs> <laughs> and we just wait for a good full minute to make sure they're out of view. And like, okay, we're going to go 90 degrees to them. Um I have an idea for something weird happening because uh, you rolled the doubles on the tens, but I'm wondering, does anyone else have any other ideas for something weird happening? I wonder if these, it's three Varu and two of them are dragging an injured one. And they sort of get to kind of, you know, within 10 feet of the cave and they look around and then they just drop the injured one there uh, and then leave. And now we've got sort of this injured Varu calling out for help. That is an idea I have for a plot twist. Does anyone have any other ideas? Oh, only that we could twist it further and say, uh, Nadira, this person is astoundingly beautiful to you. <laughs> the Varu is. Okay. Um, There's no accounting for tastes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if anything, just an idea. Mm -hmm. Do you like hmm. Go ahead, Joel. Oh yeah, I think like Nadira probably sees like the fallen Varu and either like thinks it's astoundingly beautiful or thinks like maybe like the way it moves, like it reminds Nadira of like some of the best dancers from her village and like, you know, it's beautiful how graceful this Faru is. Yeah, yeah. Even limping and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think Nadira's kind of like in hushed tones saying like we should, you know, we should help the Faru. It could help us get out of this forest. We have this, we have the new medicine. We should use it now, right? True, we do have the medicine. Well, I'm going to say, um, I've only ever fought them. Have, have any of you talked with them or tried to trade with them before? No, I never, I've never even seen one up close. shouldn't be any different than trading with any of the other uh, uh, you know, races and we'll kind of look for Henyon and not find them and 
damn it, the one person who's worked with like giants or, you know, non-humans isn't around. Um, well, you guys are all talking. I'm just like, I just kind of tromp out of the cave and right up to the Baru. And I'm going to roll uh, face danger with charm, with art. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to be like, hey, little buddy, you, you okay? What's going on with you? You understand me? Back to and either will rip my heart out or everything will be fine. So I'm gonna this is a bit in the series where we change the comic relief character and we're actually recruiting the Varu, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're creating a spin off show where Sasko and Varu form a buddy cop kind of thing. All right, so I'm rolling with parts on a plus three. So I'm going to roll 2d10 and I do six. And my three, I add three, so that's six. So I've got a weak hit on that face danger. Uh, I succeed, but face a troublesome cost. Choose one. I'm delayed, I'm tired or hurt, I'm dispirited or afraid. I sacrifice resources. Um, I am open to suggestions here as to what happens to me when I go. Uh, I feel like my success is like we find out we can communicate with the Varu. But maybe it freaks me out. Maybe I need to like. Oh, I think it's, it, it slashes at you with its claws. It's like, leave me alone. It says, and sort of, leave me alone. And, you know, sort oh, of like guttural that. human sort of speech. But. Yeah, we didn't know you, we didn't even know they could talk. So right. Yeah, like you freak it out, but you also also talk but yeah, to Yeah, you're wounded. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, so I took one uh hit to health. Uh but I've sort of offered him some food and been like, Hey, we're here to we can help you. We have some medicine. Um Nadira. <laughs> yeah. And I think as you're like calming him down, I'm kind of in the background, like rifling through the medicine that we had obtained and then also grabbing maybe some like herbs and natural berries that we had found along the way. And I conveniently have an herbalist path for this, uh, which when you attempt to heal using herbal remedies and you have at least plus one supply, um, choose one before rolling. So I will choose to add plus two. Um, but yeah, I think Nadira basically, that plus two kind of looks like she's already looking through some of the medicine books that we had found um, and maybe finds like a remedy for whatever's ailing the Varu that's written by, I think it was Sasko's mom or grandmother who was the writer of the medicine book or of like some uh, of the entries in it technically she's an elf oh okay so i think these this was like from the old country oh gotcha but there's some synergies with what i learned mm -hmm. from, uh, yeah so i think it's one of those that like she's kind of glossing over as she's making like a healing poultice for uh, you know the injury that the Varu has so i roll Bits, which how bad is my wits? Not too bad. Uh, okay, so that's what I wrote. Oh god, I got a one on my d6, but I add four because I'm an herbalist. So that is a weak hit. Um so when I heal on a weak hit. You wanna you wanna use your momentum? Oh, that's true. We can use momentum. Um, yeah, I will burn my, burn my momentum to get rid of anything below a seven, which is what my momentum is at. So I reset it to two. So that is a strong hit now. Thank you for reminding me of that. Oh, yeah. Um, so my care is helpful. Uh, so if you or the ally under your care have the wounded condition, I can clear it. Then take or give up to plus two health. So yeah, I think like 
you just see Nadira grabbing all these random herbs and like berries and kind of like tearing them up, smashing them together, applying it to like a cloth and like wrapping it around. We'll say like the Veru's legs like, since they weren't able to like walk as smoothly and immediately just kind of a look of relief that like the pain is starting to subside on the Veru's face and the deer is kind of like carefully wrapping it, tending to the wound and like already the Veru's looking better and starting to calm down, isn't slashing at Sasko anymore. <laughs> I, I think I say some kind of resentful, like, I, I could have done that. Um, Bethany, do you have any ideas why this Varu had been tossed out by his comrades? I think he stole something. I think he still got it. Loved. Stole something from the Veru folks. Yeah. I don't know what would what would what would he have stolen that would be serious enough to get him like beaten up and kicked out? Right. Yeah, like it was it was just it was like a violation of their rules or something. So it Yeah. Maybe like a map. Maybe like only the alphas can look at the map and plan where they're going. And they were just too curious oh. and they, they stole the map because they wanted to decide on their own outings. And it's like, nope, you're not loyal to the pack. Yeah, yeah. You're planning on going off on your own. You, you wouldn't need a map if you weren't planning on leaving. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm reading just about the Veru in the book, and like dogs, they're very territorial. And I wonder if that, so I really like the idea that they're getting a map, but maybe this person was sort of planning a, um, like, uh, to split off and create their own pack, uh, and was trying to figure out how to carve out the territory for themselves, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out exactly where the borders were and where the weak parts were, things like that. Um, do you think Toran would be able to engage with the Veru to kind of see if they can be a guide for us or something like that? What do you What do you think Toran's uh, attitude towards this? Yeah, Veru I think. Is? I think at first, like you know. Uh, he's kind of wary of it, but um, like, yeah, this this Varu is obviously not a huge threat unless you get within slashing distance. Right. Um, I've got a curveball for you. Maybe Kaya can speak Varu or understands them. Oh, that yeah, Your yeah, good. nice. I haven't yeah, I haven't gotten to use that move yet. Let's do it. Cool. Yeah. So okay. So Kaya, um, and when I when I consult with their spirit to secure an advantage or gather information, add plus one and take plus two momentum on a hit on a weak hit also endorse Joseph. Okay. I think I know what that. Uh, so in, so in our lore here, the Varu barely speaks our language, but it has another language that they normally speak in a native tongue, so to speak. Uh, yeah. And for some reason, your dead sibling knows how to speak Varu. Yep. Yeah, the, they're like the, the Jane Goodall who spent time with the gorillas. It's just they spent time with the Varu yeah. instead, sort of thing. Yep. <laughs> totally. Um, okay, so I'll try to roll, roll plus wits. Okay. I do not share a bond with the Varu, but I do get a plus one. Uh, cool. All right. So it's actually three. Okay. Uh, so that's four, that's seven. Um, wow. 
Oh, D10. Okay, 110, 119. Wow. And then a 7 on the D6. That is not. That's a failure. And you don't have enough momentum. I don't think so. Let me see what's my momentum. No, I, I don't. Oh, yeah. Actually, I do have enough momentum to make it a, uh, a weak hit. Uh, I believe. Really? Your momentum D10. needs to be equal to or greater than one of the D10s. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. Then I do not. Yeah, I don't think you subtract the momentum. I think it. Yeah, it, I was thinking I said you subtract the momentum and then, but yeah, you're right. It, they have to, it has to be yeah. a Maybe Kai's really reluctant because they're like, you know, if you help this one, the other ones won't talk to us. We, we, we can't help them. We shouldn't get involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sh shouldn't get involved and, and definitely shouldn't get involved on the side of the one who just got beat up and kicked out by, you know, the pack that we're probably going to have to go through their territory. So is this where we say goodbye to the injured Varu? I mean, uh, aren't we like the mammoth? Can't we, can't, we, can't we put it up on the mammoth and just, <laughs> oh, hang on. We're going into human territory, so that may not be a good idea any anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we should just like leave some food and some, you know, more uh, ointment and just like leave them in the cave. That yeah. might be yeah. better for everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to mark off uh, like one supply to um, give to the Varu. Um, I feel like this is... Um... That is going to come back to bite us later, almost literally. Something, something's going to, that, that's the kind of thing that where we set that up. There's going to be biting. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, on a yeah. miss, isn't it? Unearths a dire threat or reveals the unwelcome truth that undermines your quest. Oh, I think if anything, it, it is that oh. like the rest of the, of this ruse pack is coming for it. Yes. And we just, we don't know it yet. Yeah, like that. It could be that because we've given it our food, uh, our sense, our uh, you know, uh, smell scent is on that, so that it makes it much easier for them to track us later and bite us. Right. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Yep. Yeah, canines. <laughs> it's almost just like my dog. Um, I think we roll Undertake a Journey again, right? Yeah, I think so. Because it went so well the last time. Uh, Joel, you want to go? Yeah. Um, I don't think I have anything that'll help me here. So that was this, right? Yep. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. I have two wits, so that's a four. So that is a strong hit. Nicely done. Um, so we reach a waypoint. If the waypoint is unknown to you, envision it as the Oracle with unsure. Then choose one. You make good use of your resources, mark progress. You move at speed, mark progress, and take plus one momentum, but suffer minus one supply. Oh. Can I, can I suggest it's like a rock outcrop that looks a bit like a wolf's head? Because aren't we going through Baru territory or something? Yeah. 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 I think it's like, and that's kind of like traveling here. We're using like different um, imagery and like you know, go to the wolf's head and then, you know, head to like this other um, fixture basically or waypoint. And so we get to this one and I think we all just know it as a wolf's head just because it's like ter Buru territory, wolf's head, that sort of thing. But behind the wolf's head on the side that we never look at, there's like claw marks and like territorial scratching from the Buru yes. that no one ever thinks to see. Right. Um, and I am going to do the one where I get plus one momentum, but minus one supply. So I'll just say that Nadira kind of takes some of the herbs that she's gathered and makes like invigorating teas basically for people, like crushes up some herbs, puts it into people's water bottles. And it's like, this will help us keep going. Um, and that kind of passes it around to people to take a swig of. This is <clears throat> medieval Gatorade. Yep. Yeah, you know, uh, 
oh god i can't think of what the slogan is but yeah basically like passes around the gatorade bottle electrolytes and that sort of thing and then so then we get a progress so is that just one progress that we should be at or should we it is one progress okay. yes we're on the board we did it um whose turn is it to roll undertake yours oh boy wits I believe that's a weak hit. Sasko the weak hit. That's what we call him. Uh, so uh, we reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one supply. I think I just drop shit. But maybe we're being chased and we have to drop stuff as we're running through the bushes yeah. or something. Or? <laughs> I'm making a lot of noise with the concertina. So we suddenly get chased and i'm like oh boy and we there's kind of a keystone cops moment and then um uh i wonder if this is like uh waypoint is um a mysterious um tower that's just simply known as uh the airy and um it's very tall. It's the it's taller than the trees, uh, and it's made out of like a polished um, gray marble or, or uh, stone. Um, and there's one of the metal pillars is near it, and it's just like people have just been trying to figure out it's sort of like a stonehenge type thing where they're like they measure the distance between them they compare the circumferences they're just trying to figure out what this thing uh means maybe there's an insight to this tower but no one's ever been is sasuke gonna try and like a tune do the music thing with this one again or i felt like that got us into a lot of trouble <laughs> um... that's never stopped you before <laughs> Is this where we run into somebody who isn't who they say they are? Oh, interesting. I mean, I didn't I didn't roll badly enough for something terrible to happen, <laughs> but we uh, we I don't see why not. Maybe it's uh, like trying, like like studying it, you know, the way people have been doing. A sage, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering if um. This is Simulu, um, Sasko's mother, and she's actually weaving the storm. Like that part of how she communicates with the oh iron God. pillars is causing the storm. So she doesn't want to stop. So that's why the storm keeps going. And we've either got to, you know, knock her out or talk her out of it or whatever. But yeah, she's a bit addicted like, or obsessed with this. I'm like, Mom. <laughs> um, You're embarrassing me. Um, oh my gosh, that just blew my mind. I love that. Uh, I mean, but I haven't, I, I sort of imagined uh, Sasko hasn't seen his mother, if that's okay with everybody, um, in a long, long time. So the fact like we run into her in the middle of the wilderness and she's sort of noodling with these pillars is, uh, is shocking to me. I believe we have a move for that. Talking about endure stress. Yeah. Is that a suffer move? No. Yes. That's yes, it is. Spirit. So we're like, hey, what's that? What's that lady doing? She looks like she's sort of weaving the storm or something, and you're like, <laughs> I, yeah, like I said, you can see sort of me approaching her, and she doesn't really even realize that we're there, and I kind of circle her, just trying to get a sense, like trying to shake the cobwebs like is this really my mom oh my gosh um i suffer 
negative spirit equal to my foe's rank or as appropriate to the situation. Uh, how much spirit do you think I should suffer? I think two or three at least. Well, I'm down to three, so uh, let's, let's, <laughs> make mean... a, let's make a one. Or let's make it, uh, I'll be down to one. I lose two. Sasuke's a mess. Gosh, Sasuke needs some therapy. Um, <laughs> and then I roll plus heart or plus spirit, whichever is higher. And my heart is three. So I just rolled a weak hit. On a weak hit, I press on. So, should we do a compel move to talk her out of doing it? So, what is she doing to kind of encourage the storms? Is she also? I think she's music? she's like standing on like a pile of rocks and she's throwing her arms around, sort of as if weaving the storm to go stronger and keep drawing the clouds in rather than sort of dissipate. I also wonder if she's sort of holding a note that's causing the metal pillar to oh, yeah. vibrate, which is helping the generate the storms. Just a constant hum, like a low tone. Yeah. And she, she has, that. go ahead, Bethany, sorry. Um, it's like a very thin piece of metal with the holes placed at exactly the right point that the wind plays, plays it and keeps it going. So nice. it's like this self-perpetuating Yes. Um, so I saw a move in here. Uh, uh, called Forge a Bond, which might be interesting to try. Does anyone know what one it's in relationship moves? Gotta be here. Well, yeah, it's in relationship moves. So I guess in this case, it's because so this she's is, a bit like a stranger. You haven't seen her for a while. So you're right. trying to bring back your history together to say, to have like to start a rapport before yeah. you tell her stop, stop. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it says when you spend significant time with a person or a community, stand together to face hardships or make sacrifices for their cause. So maybe, maybe he's pleading, you know, he's sort of engaged in a very emotional outburst. Does, does that sound okay to you all that the trigger is that I hit the trigger? Okay. And then we'll get off Sasko for a bit. Oh my God. So I uh, miss and I rolled two sevens on my D10s. So I'm refused. What is the price I pay? I would like some input on this. I think we're seeing Sasko's exit from this adventure, by the way. Okay, in that case. Maybe the only way he can convince her to stop is by agreeing to like go with her and help her and whatever it is she's the, she's trying to do with all this. Yeah. Is it that she doesn't connect with him at all, and so he feels like he needs to stay, or does she sort of plead back with him, come with me, or does he need to sacrifice himself? to stop the storms. I like the idea that she's like, no, you join me. Like, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, what right he there. decides is. Join me, young Skywalker. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Search your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really want to. Talk to metal pillars and create dead storms. <laughs> and then, yeah, does Saska join her or does he use that as like his opportunity to sacrifice himself nobly? Oh, yeah, I mean, there's, um, 
Uh, let me ask you all this. As you continue on your journey, are the storms important to you? Do you want to have those as a, a narrative foil? Should we keep them around or should we get rid of them? I'm not fast. I'm able to get rid of them here if it serves Sasuke's story. Yeah, I I'm sure we can find other things to cause us trouble. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. Uh, like, I don't know. I, I like the idea that she's sort of persistent and he's feels like he needs to stick around to break through to her. Another option is the storm's getting worse and like a lightning bolt goes towards her and Sasuke jumps at the last second and bye bye Sasuke. <laughs> Good. And is that like the motivation that causes her to stop is her son sacrificing himself for her? Mm. Yeah, so like the storms are getting worse. Her pitch is like her voice is getting more intense and she can do that thing with her voice where she can do sort of two tones at the same time. So she's, and she's holding a big metal thing and lightning comes to <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I feel like she's got her hands on the pillar to kind of help facilitate the vibrations. And then um, she intensifies and the storms go from just simply wind and rain to an electrical storm. Uh, and um, I feel like one of you notices like, that lightning is going to hit her. Uh, and I just don't even think. And I kind of push uh, through. I push, I push her out of the way. And the lightning strikes. Fried Sasko. Yeah. Keenan looks at the accordion. Notice it's undamaged. And he's very annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll stop and bury him and... Yeah, um, what what about his his mother? Is she, does she just like run off? Is she injured? I think, she I, think she's, I think she sort of comes out of her trance and takes him into her arms. I don't know that I'm dead. Maybe I'm not dead, but I'm just not. I'm no, he's, really... he's dead. We're going to bury him. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could, I'm happy to be dead. I don't care. No, no. I, I wonder. Yeah, but he's uh, hurt enough for her to stop. So, right. Yeah. And, and also, he needs to stop. Like, they're, like, his adventuring days are done. Yeah. Maybe he's, um, uh, yeah. Maybe maybe his adventuring days are done. Maybe his hands are like burned, so he can't play his concertina yeah. anymore. His like vocal cords are fried, so he can't sing. I'm familiar with this problem. Yes. <laughs> uh, I like this. Um, and so they maybe they just go off. I believe. Mean Right. Oh, as I say, I see there's a write your epilogue move for when you Ooh. retire from your life as yeah. Sworn. Do we want to take a little moment to kind of see, like, yeah, yeah, why not? What happens up to Sasko? Yeah. Like, this is a little, like, after credit scene of, like, where's Sasko now? Compared to my bonds, do I even have any bonds? You just tried to forge a bond. I guess that didn't really work. Well. It didn't go so well. Hey, down the bottom, you got Simulu, Nissan, and Myrtle. Yeah, I'm seeing actually line eight on the spreadsheet is bonds three out of 10. Okay. All right, let me roll 2d10 and see what happens. Oh, there we go. I got a weak hit. That's what they call me, weak hit Sasko. That was a quest move, right? No. Relationship move. My life takes an unexpected turn. That is true. 
but not necessarily for the worse. I'm reunited with my mother. You find yourself spending your days with someone or with someone or in a place you did not foresee. Also true. Envision it. We just did this. <laughs> mm. Maybe you go and stay with your grandmother, with your mother. You, you meet back up and yeah. Yeah. I think I think mom's got this kind of dwelling in the forest at some kind of nexus where a lot of the metal pillars there just happens to be a cluster of metal pillars there and she nurses me back to health uh i'm still unable to carry a tune and uh or really speak for extended periods of time this is hitting very close to home and um uh we we forge we make a vow to um to reconnect with my grandmother does that sound right i'm, I'm wondering if there's like a a scene sort of one winter's night where your mother's uh, telling about um how she set up the metal pillars and it, there's like a sepia tone flashback where she's actually planting seeds in the ground and she's running around the place and her acorn seeds actually grew the metal pillars. But oh this, that'll God. be like the final post credit scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is like, uh, sets us up for another movie. It's like the, yeah, the, in the credits scene. The, the final reveal. I'm just imagining your grandma's like whole goal in life is to take down the metal pillars. <laughs> like just two opposing forces in the same family. Yes. Yeah. It makes me regret having stopped at all to chat with my mom. Yeah. You get caught in the middle of the constant arguing between yeah. your mom and your grandmother. Um, um, thank you for that. That was very entertaining. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone indulging in Sasco uh, for a bit. Um, uh, I was going to ask. Um, I guess I guess we're good to go, though. Um, and that was a great time for me to uh, wrap up. So what I could do is pass host uh, to. Uh, I can make Blake a co-host if that's okay with you, Blake. And then when I you know what I'm just gonna make you host host. Yeah. So we still appear to be recording, so I can uh drop now. So uh are we good to go? Yep. All right, I will drop. Maybe I'll take a break. And I I should be able to have access to the recording, so I can't wait to see what happens <laughs> with the rest of it. All right, friends. Thanks so much. Okay. I really appreciate it. It was nice playing with you all. Take care. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. Uh, do we want to have a break there? Or? Uh, sure. It seems like a good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe just five minute uh, bio break. Okay. Yeah. Pause this. Yeah. Okay. So you are intrepid travelers say our goodbyes to Sasko and his mother and we have to keep going home because we've only got what two of ten <laughs> progress marked mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no we need kind ten of... <laughs> wow yeah uh... um, okay so here we go All right, um, I'm pretty sure it's my turn to roll anyway um, too many damn tabs open so we want to undertake a journey, which is wits. Okay, I've got three. Excellent. Let's go. So Keenan is leading the way home, hopefully. So that would be five. So weak hit. Hmm. Yeah, so minus one supply. Yep, I'll do that. Go to two. And uh, progress track. All right. So leading through the, the woods as the woods sort of become hills. Um, we sort of stop every now and then and listen just in case we're being followed. We're a bit paranoid, but we keep going. But 
you know, nothing super bad happened. Okay. I don't think we need to add anything to that. So is this our next waypoint? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. So we've done three of ten at this point. At this point, like, since the Undertaker journey hasn't had us, you know, ask the Oracle or pay the price or anything like that, do we just keep rolling, do you guys think? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, that makes sense. I think, has Torin rolled for Undertaker journey at all? Uh, I was the first one, so if we're okay, so yeah, we're probably back to me now. Okay. Okay. Plus wits. Um. Um. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I did this. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, actually, that's a strong hit. <laughs> oh, I rolled a three on the d6, <laughs> and it's a strong hit because the two tens are a three and a one. Hmm. Oh, that's right. So you reach a waypoint. Yep. So that goes up to four. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Oh, you choose mm -hmm. one. So you then. Oh, cool. Yeah, I see. Uh, choose one. Make good use of resources, mark progress, or you move at speed. Take plus one momentum and suffer minus one supply. Uh, oh, yeah, I've got lots of supply. I'll just uh, swap one yeah. of those out for momentum. So we're sort of camping through the night or something? Or are we still yeah, in the hills? What I, do you think it looks like? Um, I think it's... I think it's still hilly, but the the forest is getting thicker. Like it's not sort of sparse trees and and rocks. Now it's just trees, lots of trees. Um, and uh, I think we maybe start seeing these very very like eroded trails um used by the the giants mammoths oh, okay like okay. well eroded and and like the trees are just sort of there's areas where the trees are just sort of like bent out of the way <laughs> is that something we kind of avoid like it's kind of a universal like those are giants' paths. We should stay off of those and stay on like safer. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah. Do we like use the path or do we, is it something we should stay away from? I think we'll use them. I think like Henian would have used them before. So he's, you know, we can let him take point and with a mammoth and just follow in their wake. And, you know, if there's any trouble, they'll see the mammoth first anyway. So true. Let them lead for half a day or whatever, see how they go. Um, all right, Joel, you want to do the next roll? Yeah. Um, so that is an eight for the action die. So another strong hit. Um, yeah, which I think this one is kind of like, we almost think that we should go to, you know, like get off the path and go to another area maybe Nadira's new and she's like I remember there's a you know specific outcropping that we're supposed to go to and Penyon's like well no the mammoth is you know still going on this path we should just follow the mammoth and we end up trusting the mammoth and it kind of the way we were supposed to go would have been like one of the sinkholes from the cave system that had collapsed and so we end up like avoiding that and going like a safer road and uh make camp in a mammoth sleeping area so how all the trees are kind of like split sideways there's this area where 
all trees in the middle have basically been uprooted by the mammoth's trunks and stuff. And then all the ones on the sides are just like fanned out. And it's this dirt kind of just sleeping ground where like 10, 15 mammoths would just kind of curl up and sleep in. And where these like, you... <laughs> tiny little people just sleeping in it. When you said mammoth sleeping area, I kept thinking of Mr. Snuffleupagus and Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> They got their nightcaps on and mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. their little chamomile tea. So I will take the minus one supply as like Nadira kind of makes food for that night of sleeping. And I think I'll we're getting low. Minute. Some of us are getting low on supply. Well, I'm down to two. That'll put me down to three. Yep. Okay. I suppose we could always. Forage. I think there's a move for that, right? You can see what the results of the next roll are and see if we need to do That's that true. or definitely. All right, I'll do the next one. Keenan takes point again as we go off the mammoth trail uh, through the hills. And I had two. Oh, sweet. Eight. Uh, oh, damn it. So still a weak hit. So. Reach away point in my progress for suffer minus one supply. Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'm getting low on supply and I suggest we do some foraging because we don't seem to be followed by the Varu anymore and we're getting low on, yeah, gear. Yeah. Do people want to do that or do you want to press on or? Progress tracks. Yeah, foraging sounds like a good idea. We haven't done that yet. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Nadira uh, checks on like her herbs and stuff are kind of getting low. Let's see another wits roll. I'm trying to find where foraging is now. Uh, um, it's under adventure moves. It's called resupply. When you hunt, forage, or scavenge. Uh, okay. yep. So I suppose like uh, Keenan could always hunt for like wild game to you know, eat for the night, something like yeah. that. Have an extended lunch and I'll, I'll go out and look for some boar or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Uh, Wits three. Okay, cool. That's not the best. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, no, that is five. Uh, so I've got a strong hit. Oh, sweet. The I'm like first. Hit. So you take oh. plus two supply. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, it'll be a wild boar. Obviously, the mammoth probably isn't eating it. It's just for the people, but um, but it did take some time out from our journey. I don't know. While I'm while I'm off hunting, what do you think uh, you two are up to? Um, uh, you know what? I'm a farmer. I and. Hum- well, humans haven't been in the Ironlands all that long, so probably whatever you know crops we have are pretty close to the wild variant of them. So I think I'm just looking for whatever you know the wild version is of the potato analog that I grow at home. You know, uh, so I will forage also. And is that also that's what's to you. Lots of wits moves today. Okay, so my d6 is a five. Oh, no, that's a strong hit. Cool. So it's with those two. Yeah, I think Nadir is probably honestly doing the same. Um, kind of like while Keenan's hunting for food and um, Torrin's hunting for, um, you know, like the potato equivalent or whatever here. Nadir is kind of looking for like the medicinal herbs and stuff. Um, probably grumbling under her breath, like, you know, I'm guessing Kenyon's going to get himself hurt or uh, Henyon's going to. Uh, what's the mammoth's name? Uh, Ash 2 is going to step on Henyon's foot again and, you know, going to have to reset the bones. So, like, she's picking herbs that'll help with like pain and help fight infection and that sort of thing. 
So April the Fritz. Oh God. Uh, so that is a weak hit. And I cannot use momentum at all to fix that. So something will be happening in the story because I need to pay the price. Let's see. I think that's on a miss, not a weak hit. Or if you're doing resupply. It was a miss. Yeah, not a weak hit. Um, I got like a three on the action diet and then a nine and six on my D10s. So I roll a D100. I hope that is. Or do we just want to have the Varu come back and have a battle roll? Yeah, I think, I think if anything, that makes sense. Like Nadir is kind of a little further off on her own, maybe kind of for like where the potatoes are growing it kind of chokes out a lot of the other plants. So Nadir kind of went a little further, found a little thicket of herbs and stuff. And as she's like picking at them, she just hears growling in the trees. And that's kind of when like... Yeah, I think there were two because the third one was the one we helped. So two of them would go against you. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe one round of battle was just you against them and then while but it like me and uh, Torona running towards to help sort of thing. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, that seems right. Um, so are you thinking the quick battle move or like enter the yeah. fray? Oh, it's up to you. Um, I'll do the quick battle move for this yeah. one. So when you fight a battle, I think Nadir is going to try and use trickery as much as she can. Okay. Using uh, cover to get at, using the trees and stuff like that. Yeah, and if anything, maybe like knows she can't win, so starts to run away and leaves her scarf on one tree as like a decoy that the Varu like tackle. Okay. Um, so that is my shadow. Uh, still a weak hit. So. Oh, crap. I know. Now I'm really bad. Last time it was so good. Uh, So I think what it looks like is Nadira kind of does that. Like she runs away and is like darting between trees trying to get back to Torin and Keenan and like leaves her scarf on a tree and like darts behind a rock to hide and is kind of doing the horror movie thing where she's just hiding behind the rock holding her breath and thinks she's escaped so is about to like turn out of the way to get back to you guys and there's like the guru right there and they just there's a um, a flashback of like Henian just giving the mammoth a hug <laughs> very tranquil moment mm-hmm. <laughs> meanwhile Kynan's running through the bushes Torren's running through the bushes <laughs> yep and Henian's yeah. just like holding Cam just nice and peaceful having some tea Let's see so I on a miss, you are defeated, and the objective is lost to you. That means you have to flee. So the herbs, you have to drop them and run off sort of thing. It's... Yep. Yeah, I think she kind of, like, takes a slash to maybe, like, the side of her arm, like, the way she was about to rendezvous with you guys and has to kind of, like, keep running away from them. Yep. So... Yeah. So they're chasing you. We're running towards you. And now we roll battle again. Is this just three of us this time? I think so, yeah. This is kind of when, like, you guys, maybe, like, Nadira runs into an outcropping, and you guys also run out, and we see each other, and then the two Baru jump out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to roll battle first, Bethany? Sure. Uh, What am I doing? I am... Nothing's a spear, so probably not going to go from far distance here. Uh, wrong tab. So I think I am just going to go like straight at them with the spear. Uh, hoping that Keenan uh, has a plan. <laughs> um, and I guess that means I'm rolling heart to two. Okay. Cool. Four, 
one and six. Oh, cool. Three. That's a strong hit. Nice. Yeah. Yes, I think I just like swipe at one with my spear and then, you know, barely nick it, but then like just drive it right into the next one. Yep. So you sort of force one to go back about seriously wound one. Uh, I'll roll one. I'm attacking from the flank. See how we go. I'm going to roll my sign. What the hell? One. Sweet. Uh, seven. So weak hit. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to say I got uh, wounded. Um, I got badly wounded by one, but I managed to um, drive them off. So are we going to kill them or just sort of wound them enough to bugger off? Maybe you wound them enough to kind of, like Nadir is kind of already injured. It sounds like both of you guys kind of got injured in the fight. Maybe we're not <laughs> strong enough at the moment to fully take yeah. him on. All right, so maybe it looks like they're going to run. Nadira can attack if she wants, or we can just kind of let them go and get out of the area ourselves. Yeah, I think it's kind of one of those. There are like, no winners in this fight. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking at our wounds. Like Nadira wasn't able to resupply. Everyone's a little injured, and we just kind of both part ways. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um. All right, so you know we'll probably trek on for a couple of hours before we all make camp or whatever. Isn't there a make camp actually roll? I guess from a couple of several hours. Yeah. Okay. Three. All that. Three. Let's go. Oh no! I had three. So it's eight. So it's a strong hit. Sweet. Okay, so I make a damn good campsite. <laughs> well, you did um, get that wild boar, so that is fitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. so that helps us uh, take one health. I can choose two. Oh, sorry, we can all each choose two from the make camp list. Oh, I'm going to take health because I got hurt. Oh, nice. Um, okay, so yeah, my health is fine, and. Uh... Plus on momentum, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah, carve up the boar and start cooking that. And probably put some light snap branches around the edge of the campsite so we can hear people sneak, trying to sneak in to get us or whatever. Um, how wounded are you two? Bad. Yeah, that's right. Could have gone a lot worse so far. <laughs> All right. So you each took two from the make camp thing? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. Uh, momentum. And then I was thinking when you break camp, add plus one if you undertake a journey. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, uh, well, do you want to roll that then? So I'll take that plus one, and then I'll do the next undertaking of a journey. Cool. Uh, full bellies, we're feeling good. Yeah, and got another miss, even oh, no. with that plus one. Even with the plus one? Mm -hmm. Do you have momentum to cover it? Uh, not enough. Not enough to even get a weak hit. Uh. So, let's we undertake a journey on a miss. You are waylaid by a perilous event. Pay the price. Uh, let's see. What does the D100 give us for inspiration? 97. A companion or ally is put in harm's way, or you are if alone. I think. I don't mind. Bring it on. Okay. I think, like, Maybe Nadira's kind of leading this leg of the journey, but asking him to scout ahead of it, just to make sure things are safe and kind of like 
you being further ahead. Um, like you're kind of split from the party and you don't see, would it be if anyone has any good ideas, otherwise like another Varu, like maybe we're starting to cross over into another Pax territory. Okay. Uh, the only other thing was a little bit like a bear or a saber tooth tiger or something. Oh yeah. I like the idea of a saber tooth tiger. Just kind of yeah. introducing that into the ecosystem. I think two of us are slightly wounded, so it's just yeah, it's picked up on our, our blood and following our scent. It's like, mm. mm hmm It's some easy noms this one's out on his on his yeah. own. <laughs> yeah. And as like Keenan scouting ahead, it's kind of like prowling right behind you. Um so I guess I will do a face danger to try and get the hell out of hell away from it. And of course, if it goes badly, I'm going to have to battle or whatever. But I'm yelling out, go to the west, go to the west or something because it's chasing me. Um, okay, so speed, agility, yeah, it would be speed. Not with edge, so you know what go. Three weak hit. Okay. On a weak hit, you succeed. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna endure stress. Um, um yeah, basically why am I marking? One stress. Where do I put that? Because that's not spirit, is it? Shaken. I just shake shaken ability. Okay, so I've got to do endure stress because this thing was sort of right next to me and I'm scared. I'm, I'm running. Yeah. I've, you know, battled many things, but not, not big friggin' cat with massive teeth. So I'm going to roll endure stress. What are we doing here? Spirit. Yeah, because there's test your spirit, which is... You face, when you face mental stress or your result is tested. Yeah, heart or spirit. Oh, is that like another one that the name of the movie changed? Be... Oh, okay. possibly, yeah. So I'm using the so seven. PDF. Okay, so I succeeded. Um, strong hit, shake it off. Um, all right, so you know, I'm scared, I keep running, but I'm like, no, I'm not slowing down. I'm, I'm, my slow mode is sort of a jog at this point. I'm like, no, we've got to keep going. That thing's still out there. We've got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. We're still only halfway for our journey, aren't we? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I can get a strong hit here. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I get it. Oh, no, I don't uh, Okay, so that is a. Do I have? Can I make that a strong hit? I can. I can make that a strong hit. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I have to look and see what that actually does because I haven't gotten a strong hit on Undertaker Journey yet. Um, you reach a waypoint, and if the waypoint is unknown to you. Envision it and then choose one. Okay. Um, well, let's mark progress. And I guess I'll take a momentum to make up for the one that, or the, the, the many that I just spent. And minus one supply. Cool. Yeah, so this is our next waypoint. Um, what's, what do you think it is? Maybe it's your um, what's it called? whispering willows. It's like that village. I think this is the kind of <clears throat> halfway point to where we're trying to go to. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think if anything, like some of the 
uh, supplies and or some of the stuff that we got at the shipwreck that we're not necessarily required to bring to um, our destination that, you know, it's kind of like Nadira's cut. She kind of leaves with some of the village elders here. And there's a moment of, yeah. you know, her like giving it to them. And maybe it's a small book on like, like the book on medicine and the book on um, family lineage and stuff like we need to bring with us. But there's a small book on like old world songs and plays and theater and stuff that Nadira kind of like very respectfully hands over to like the village elder um, and over to what's the person's name? Uh, oh, I never established one. I think she hands over like some of it to Amara, the elderly woman who taught her medicine, who's also a village elder who kind of does a lot of the arts for the village and kind of the, um, you know, a lot of the like theater stuff and whatnot. So they kind of gain access to old world songs and poetry and some of the plays that were performed in the old world. Um, and if anything, maybe they put on a like ceremony for us as like a thank you type thing. Yeah, yeah, we share a bit of a mini feast with them and mm -hmm. I think Keenan yeah. has a good look around and it's like, well, you know, if my village ever gets raided, I think I'll bring my family here. It, it looks nice here. I, I like this place. I think we'll visit. Um, would this, do you think this would count as a sojourn when you spend time in a community seeking assistance? Or yeah, kind of, it sounds like it. Like taking a moment to rest and recuperate in this village before we continue on. Yeah, it, it's it's a uh, the assistance is is fatigue. We 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 get to rest and just you know not be on alert all the time and yeah yeah, yeah that sounds good. <laughs> Let's see. When you spend time in a community oh. seeking assistance, roll heart. Oh god, if you share a bond at plus one. Okay. So we're rolling individually or as a group or um. I'm guessing your guys' heart is definitely higher than mine. So if you want to roll your own, you might have better luck. Yeah, it's a share of bond, so okay. I guess it would be on an individual. Okay. Uh, Bethany, yeah. you want to go first? Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Uh, plus heart. I see that. I think heart is plus one, but let me check. So many tabs. Oh, uh, it is plus two. Okay. Uh, we hit. Now I gotta look and see what that means. On a hit, you and your allies may each focus on one of your chosen recover actions and roll plus hard again. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm confused by this move. Okay. On a hit, you and your allies may each focus on one of your chosen recover actions and roll plus heart again. If you share a bond at plus one on a strong hit, plus take plus two. Okay. Let's see. Is that so, in relationship moves on the. Here yeah. Go. So, Joan. Um, Okay, so I think it is supposed to be a group move. Okay. Um, so I'll get the impression we're just taking one from each, for, well, one from the list below. So you take oh. one of the recover options. Oh, and so you... recuperate, consort, provision plan. Okay. Yeah, okay. So do you actually do that or? No, you don't. You, you roll hard again to see if you can do it, I guess. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. anything about roll hard again. That's only on a hit, which is a. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, so I, I, I got a weak hit. Um, it's a bit weird you're rolling twice. That is a, it's a very strange move. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. I think it's you pick one and then you roll again and you either get plus two more, which totals 
So you'd get a total of plus four, you'd get a total of plus three on a weak hit, or you would get nothing on a miss. I guess. Oh. I think that's what it says. So it's saying, so that first roll was just to get the plus whatever's listed. But you can roll hard again to get plus two more for that action. So if you did the recuperate, you're getting plus two health. But then if you roll hard again, you'd get plus four health. Oh, okay. That might be it. That might be, it might be optional. Like you can, you can try to get more if you want to. If you're just really sense. low on something. Yeah. And we, yeah. we weren't doing that badly. Um, no, I don't think, I don't think anybody needs plus four of anything. No. Um, yeah. I'm actually, let's see. Do I want spirit or supply? I haven't, I've only used spirit once. So I'll just go back to supply. Um, is it my turn to roll the Undertaker journey move? Or? No. I believe it's your turn, yeah. It's, yep, it is. Let's go. So, seven. Strong hit, sweet. Okay. So, yep, going through the hills. Um, sort of cool breeze, but the sun is shining. Definitely pass the halfway point home. It's not the longest trip I've been on, but I yeah, feel like homesick or worrying what's happening to my kids and seeing what's going on. Yeah. So peaceful section of the journey. Um I think it's Joel's turn next. Yep. Uh Let's see, that is a weak hit also. Um, so that we reach our waypoint and mark progress. So we are at eight now. Uh, oh, but suffer minus one supply. Okay. So I think this waypoint Let's see what location says. Oh, location says caravan. <clears throat> I think if anything, we're, we kind of like travel all the ways and there's a caravan from the Whispering Willows, maybe like a traveling minstrel group, basically. Like there's some people singing, some people dancing and whatnot. And they kind of realize we're from the Whispering Willows because we have like, I'm assuming Nadira has clothes that are very much like their fashion. And since, you know, everyone kind of rested and recuperated there, maybe you have like a shirt from there or, you know, stuff has been like mended and it's very noticeably from Whispering Willows. So they kind of let us rest there for a bit. And that's our kind of like next waypoint that we go to. I'm wondering, um, is there something they do or have that Kaya finds interesting? You're muted. That's me. Yeah. So, like, if this is a traveling show, maybe they have like a like a fortune teller or medium or something. Uh, some way that Kaya can like actually talk to everybody um so they like communicate via this person and it's mostly just like yelling at <laughs> yelling at us for all the bad decisions we've made like i told you i told you not to not to help that that varu i what were you people thinking and I think at some point the, the, the medium actually gets up and like, you know, swats Torin upside the head. Like, hey, listen to me. You ask me for advice and you don't take it. Yeah, we all expect it to be this like beautiful meeting with like 
you know, the spirit of your sibling right. and that they're just berating us for all of our mistakes. Yeah, they're just like really frustrated. Like, come on, I've been of, trying to tell you this whole time. We're, we're shuffling our feet and kind of looking at the ground mm-hmm. like we're naughty yeah. school kids or something. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe Kaya's going, you know, I, I, I've been talking to the mammoth. What did the mammoth tell you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mammoth's going the right way. <laughs> Follow the mammoth. Yeah, I think it's a lot of just like, you know, hand waving, just like frustrated, finally getting to say, you know, yell all of the things that they've been trying to tell us this whole time. And then finally they like calm down and, you know, like, but it's nice to finally talk to you. <laughs> How are you doing? You know, like, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Torin is just like, I missed you. <laughs> like, leave it at that. Uh, but like, other than that, I think it's a it's a pretty chill. Um, camp actually like uh i don't know how do they react to the mammoth well, they would probably enjoy like dancing around it making music with high the notes kids are all climbing like, on it <laughs> yeah the um, the people are braiding like beads into the mammoth's hair and stuff yeah, yeah. i think keenan's sort of not really into the the festivities so much he keeps looking back and because he's He's just worried about that cat coming back. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Like what? I imagine this caravan, they probably have some kind of defenses if they come through here and they're, you know, they're always saber tooth cats around. Yeah. Just so, spears, I guess. Keep them yeah. at bay. You keep a big fire going at all times, maybe. Or... Mm-hmm. Be like little clackers you spin around that make a lot of noise yeah. and just get the cat off. <laughs> Oh yeah, like they probably give the children who are running around playing those, and the children think it's like a game to play with, but it's actually to scare away. Yeah, predators. yeah, they probably have like maybe bells tied to the the kids as they're running around, and you know any any animals they have also probably have some sort of noise maker attached to them. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a very noisy caravan. Mm-hmm. It's really it's really kind of too bad Sasko isn't here. He wouldn't join this <laughs> caravan. All right, uh, whose turn the roll is it? Uh, oh, I think it's mine again. Or wait, did I just roll? No, okay, I didn't. Uh, oh, that's a strong hit, nice. I should know what a strong hit means by now. Uh, you make good use of your resources or take, okay. What cool. sort of terrain is this, do you think? Uh, see, so the camera swoops past us. Yeah, so like we've gone past this caravan, which needed some kind of decent, you know, trail to follow. So I think, I think the land is kind of leveling out. It's a, it's like a plateau. Um, it's a much higher elevation than it was like near the coast, but it's, uh, it's less hilly. Like we're, more like there are less valleys. There's still the hill, <laughs> uh, and um, and the forest is thinning out a little bit again. Uh, there's there's grass visible on the ground. It's not like choked out from from being shaded by the trees. Um, the mammoth keeps stopping to eat like grass and and whatever you know small plants it can reach. Um, and uh oh we've reached a waypoint haven't we uh oh, also i need to add we are one point away from home uh so in that case i think that we can start to see on the horizon like where where the path goes straight and you can see a long way start to see uh like kind of a the haze of smoke from a from that uh, town we're going toward, yep. or I guess the town that's like five miles out of our way. 
Yeah. So familiar landmarks, been here before. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's my turn. No. Is it? Yeah. Let's, um, let's make sure. It's wits. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me stuff this up. And bam, six. Yep. <laughs> Total failure. Ooh. Sweet. Um, you are waylaid by a perilous event. Pay the price. Okay. Since percentage size going. Hmm. Oh, no, not wrong, wrong dice. Eh, let's try again. <laughs> Too many dice. All right, 29. What have we got? Something of value is lost or destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Something of value is lost or destroyed. It's not like the treasure from the ship that we made all this work towards. I'd, or... I'd rather die and let you guys live on than that, <laughs> but that sucks. <laughs> Uh, Maybe it's uh, like it's part of it, like one thing from it or something. Uh, or I'm trying to think of what else we have that's like, yeah, um, what do we have? I'm gonna wonder if because I'm a like a caravan gardener, escorter, and, and, and stuff. So I'm wondering if it's my mobility, like I slip down a rock thing and break my leg. So I've got to limp oh. back into town and it's going to take months to recover, sort of thing. And obviously, that's of great value to me because <laughs> you know, yeah, I can't walk, yeah, I can't. your ability to to you know do your job it's a good thing we found some treasure <laughs> mm -hmm. so i would be yeah sort of wounded shaken uh, maimed <laughs> obviously it's all you know it'll it'll get better but it's going to take months of rehab and yeah. stuff mm -hmm. yeah we have to kind um, of like so maybe i was scouting ahead and sort of talking because you know we're a bit more relaxed we can see home on the horizon sort uh -huh. of thing and i i stumble down some rocks and slip slip bang there goes the right leg Mm -hmm. Yeah, within like almost within sight of our destination, and yeah, so we have to, to prop carry you up in on the last bit. Gas too. I try to do it without it, but it's like, no, nah, I can't. This hurts too much. <laughs> Put my bow down for the first time in weeks. <laughs> Swallow your fun. pride and get on the map. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we're still at nine, right? Do we yep. do we want to like guarantee it and get to ten, or do we want to try reaching our destination? Uh, I'm wondering if we should just say we go home and then roll on the plot twist. Oh, to kind of find out like yeah, what what, what? unexpected thing is happening there, sort of thing. Okay, yeah. So not even do the. Reach destination just yeah, say, if like, we can see on the horizon we just say we yeah. go home but what's happened dun, dun, dun. yeah uh let's hit major plot twist so i got a more dangerous foe is revealed mm -hmm. Hmm. We could tie it back to the Viru and say the Viru that was like breaking out on his own was breaking out on his own because he was trying to like get away from a scarier, more ruthless Viru. Yeah. Maybe it's one who was like, I don't know, partially raised by humans or whatever. So like the thing that made him the scariest monster of all was humanity. And it's like this Viru with like human weapons and all the worst clothes. traits of both <laughs> groups. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So both maybe we're, we're, we've, you know, we've gone home, we've said hello to everybody, we've crashed in a barn that, you know, because we arrive at night or whatever, we crash in a barn and mm -hmm. we see, you know, the camera zooms out and there's Viru crawling over walls and rooftops to get to us. Yeah. Oh, it's like no. this mercenary group of like both humans and burus coming for us 
So we go to battle move, I guess. Um, do we want this to be a detailed fight or a, just a battle? It seems like it might happen in a blur, but I think. It's up to you guys. I'm kind of leaning towards maybe battle and just have like narrate basically like a long string of fights and like the one die roll. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't mind doing battle. I'm already wounded because my leg's been broken. It's only been a couple of hours since then, sort of thing. So mm -hmm. just sitting up may... in the hail after the barn. <laughs> yeah, things may go bad for me anyway. <laughs> All right. So we roll battle each, I guess. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm going to use careful tactics to with my opponents because I have to. <laughs> I can't be brave at this point. Uh, D6. Let's go. And I was a five weak hit for battle. You achieve your duty, not that cost, pay the price. Oh, poo. Great. Um, Roll. 98. 98 is. For the companion allies, put it in harm's way. Uh. Oh. Anyone not wounded and wants to be wounded to help? <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> actually currently fine. I can take, you know, some damage. Yeah. Um, or do we want to say. Since I'm charging into this group with a spear, uh, I'm probably going to take some damage. So bring it on. Yeah. Or maybe it's I get hurt and you jump on the way drawing the aggro. So instead of them killing me, then two of them are fighting you instead of one. Yeah, that seems. All right, yeah, so like they're it... closing in on you and. Yeah, I, I fall off the barn or whatever. So I took, I, I'm hurt. I fall to the ground. One of them's about to jump for me. You help. But there's now two against you instead of one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all right. And you, you, were, you were a spear fighter, weren't you? Um, da, 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 da. Okay. I got. All right. We hit. Uh, same thing. You achieve your objective with not without cost. Pay the price. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm fighting two of them now with a spear, uh, which is kind of handy because you can stab with one end and like just hit them with the other end. So, like, if you're going to fight, two at a time, that's probably a good weapon to use. Uh, and I'm used to fighting with like, you know, just just regular wolves, you know, or, or dogs or things that are attacking yep, yep. livestock, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm competent with a spear, but I'm not, you know, the best fighter ever or anything. Uh, so I think, yeah, pay the price. Uh, wait, where do I? Where do I roll pay, pay, pay the price? Uh, it's a D100 roll. Yeah, so just 2D10. Okay. All right, 18. 18. Your action has an unintended effect. Okay. That's that. Uh... <laughs> an unattend unintended effect well okay so i'm intending to well i'm just intending to to kill them or wound them but mostly to fend them off so that um uh so that keenan can crawl away the uh, um, first th three things that come to mind is maybe you knock over a lantern start a fire maybe your spear cuts a rope and like the door shut so it's harder for anyone to get out or what is it? Maybe stuff falls out of your pack. So it's mm. harder to sort of get around. You don't want to damage it. Um, I mean, give me a chance to start a fire in the last session of anything. I'm going to start mm -hmm. a fire. <laughs> just the like cinematic value of that. Yeah, you bump yeah. a torch or a lantern or something and some hay. Yeah, because exactly. we're in a barn. So, yep. Like trying to dodge one of them, I just like back right into. 
some little candle probably that somebody has had up. Uh, or maybe that you were using to light your arrows on fire. <laughs> yeah. Turns into this like big beacon for anything out in the woods. Okay, yeah, so that's Joel's better roll. Okay. So um so a four and a nine on the D tens, and I was saying definitely I think Nadir is definitely being stealthy and using like deception and stuff and it's kind of kind of imagine where like Keenan and Torin are more used to fighting like animals attacking livestock or attacking caravans and stuff Nadir is probably the one you know the stereotypical like edge lordy assassin type character <laughs> is more used to like fighting other people so she's um, I'm going to make use of my cutthroat combat talent where I'm striking at unsuspecting foes. She's kind of like darting down alleys and like double backing and jumping out at people from behind. Um, so taking that plus two. So five, six, seven. So that I actually got a 10 on my action die. Because um, I think like she is basically just doing all the like skullduggery, sneaky, underhanded stuff of like hiding around corners, um, you know, like throwing knives at people, like using traps and stuff to like knock people down and stuff. And she feels the most comfortable doing this because she's not around you guys. So you can't see like how terrible she's being right now. And I assume like as the camera goes from like you guys and Torin defending Keenan with like fire blazing behind him and it's all heroic. And then it gets all like dark and moody when it like switches back to Nadir and stuff. Yeah, totally different soundtrack. But... <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so that is a strong hit. So I achieve my objective unconditionally, take plus two momentum. And with the cutthroat, I get another plus one. Um, so yeah, I think like there's a bunch of the Varu group that's kind of like going into the village and ransacking like businesses and homes and stuff and Nadir is just kind of taking out a bunch of them and there's just yeah, yeah. bombs everywhere okay um I think I think yep yeah. I'm gonna do face danger to try and get the hell out of there because I've got a broken leg things are on fire I, I can't stand fight it'll be stupid at this point <laughs> So watch me flee. <laughs> Hopefully, um, it's going to be speed. So edge. Okay. Six. Two. Mm, not good. Three. I completely failed to get away, and I think one of them is probably going to try and rend my back to bits. So miss. Pay the price. Ah. Oh. I, I, I think I get up and try to stagger towards a, a side door, and one of them just whoosh, uh, and rakes me, chuck, and I'm bleeding to death at this point. I'm on five, five out of five wounds. While I look up what we do, one of you two can have your shot. <laughs> um, Oh, never mind. That, that doesn't that doesn't do anything. <laughs> I need a level two to actually help with that. It is the last session, like level two of an asset. Yeah. It is last session. We could just say like. Take a level two asset, make it. Yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah. Because it's just use these things. Okay. Kind of like the cool. last scene of our like show, basically. Are people thinking? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I say go fair. for it. All right. So I'm going to mark my hands or weapon. I think just, I think my hands uh, with a blood rune and, um, and roll plus iron. See what happens here. Oops. 
I also need a D6. Okay. Okay, uh, that's a strong hit. Excellent. Um, when you make a move to inflict harm, re-roll any dice and inflict two harm on a hit. Okay. What? You could treat that as they're dead instead of just wounded sort of thing. That don't get to run away. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I re-roll. These, these roll twice things are confusing. Okay, that's, oh, that's actually also gonna be a strong hit because it's plus three. And then for each point of harm inflicted, take plus one and allocate it as health or momentum. Uh, and I may touch an ally and let them take the remaining points as plus health or plus momentum. <laughs> So I have at least two points. I'm not sure how many points I actually have, but it's at least two health points that mm -hmm. I can give you by like by yeah. draining them from the Vero the attacking you. And I think by default you do like one harm, I feel like I remember. So yeah, I think yeah. you okay. have three. So it's three then. Okay. Cool. Maybe okay. I had a wound you have to put pressure on and one of the very falls on me, so it stops me bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> and like it, it just just it's yeah it acts as it's a it's a tourniquet <laughs> I'm landing on you all right before i do my uh, endure harm roll you want to do your your stealthy assassin's creed stuff nadira <laughs> sure um let's see i'm trying to think like what a good like final scene for nadira would be um which I think, if anything, I'm kind of leaning towards taking the level two of infiltrator, which is when you gather information within an enemy area to discover their positions, plans, or methods, or when you secure an advantage within that area through observation, roll shadow instead of wits. And I'm kind of leaning towards, like, if anything, as you guys maybe, like, escape this village, Nadira stays and tries to secure an advantage for the rest of the villagers to help him escape like she kind of sees this like maybe almost... you trap some of the attackers in a barn or something so that way it gives the villagers more time to get out and... yeah and is like almost willing to like sacrifice herself to give like the rest of the villagers an advantage to escape and like get to safety um because she kind of sees this as like whispering willow almost where like they were defenseless against the Baru. Um, so i do secure an advantage with shadow and then take plus one momentum so secure an advantage um three four five so that is a weak hit do i have enough I'm one short to like make it a strong hit. But secure an advantage on a weak hit. Your advantage is short lived, or you face a danger or complication. Envision what happens. Ask the Oracle if unsure and take plus one momentum. So I get that momentum. And I think, yeah, like you said, Nadira traps a bunch of Varu like in that barn, probably. And there isn't a way to like lock the door so she basically has to like stand there with her back pressed against the door to keep them all in and you just hear them like, pounding at the door but she just sees a bunch of villagers like carrying their children carrying like whatever they can carry uh running past the barn out of town and she's just like standing there as like pounding is heard against the door yeah i'm gonna remind you a home and Watch. See how that goes. Um, oh, so six weak hit. Um, you press on. Oh, okay. So I'm trawling out of the bar. <laughs> I'm not dead. I'm just very, very badly wounded. Okay. 
thing. I'm limping out of the village, and the sort of camera you can see Nadira against the the barn doors. What's what's um, Torrin's final sort of scene to this battle? Uh, yeah, I think other than like half dragging you back, you know, up to the mammoth, like <laughs> get on the mammoth, get on the mammoth. Um, um, I think. Yeah, I mean, Torrin's not not heroic. He's not gonna stay and like help. <laughs> Sorry, um, with the with the barn, um, like his one heroic thing was, he's done it, um, and uh, I think he's just gonna get the hell out of that village, um, and I think let's see what kind of move would that be? Let me make one more. That's probably. Be face danger. Probably. Yeah, face danger to get away. Um, with no, there's no deception or stealth. Uh. No, this is just speed plus edge. Do I have any edge? I have one edge. Uh, I fail. <laughs> well, maybe there's some, some brewery that didn't get trapped and they come running out an alley and they grab you. Yeah, and then, I think and so. And then credits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, credits like credits roll as Torin is fighting with these unexpected Varu who ambushed him. Uh, Keenan is like riding the, yeah. <laughs> clinging to the mammoth, like, running into town. Probably tied to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you like get Keenan on the like, mammoth and like smack the mammoth. He's, he's tied like luggage, and, like luggage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we don't know A if finger ending. If um yeah, Torin joins them or gets eaten or what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that went just in different places. <laughs> <laughs> Was not um, expecting that outcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, we, we went sort of where the dice took us, which, you know, that's all right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, do, do people have a, like a, a highlight from today or from the whole series so far? I think of. Um, I mean, just kind of like you said, wherever, like we went wherever the dice took us, like there wasn't, there wasn't like a, I don't know, GM kind of like guiding the story or whatever. So it did go very, you know, left and right and then left again, like just kind of took a few 180 turns. We ended up in a situation that we just were not expecting at all. Um, so yeah. I just thought that was a ton of fun how out of left field some stuff was and it kind of made you like think about it and kind of reconcile like, okay, what does this prompt mean in like the current situation? So I thought that was fun. Yeah. Um, you any thoughts, Bethany? Um, I, I pretty much, it's pretty much the same thing like this. I, I, I like how the, you know, you think, you think you kind of know what's, what's about to happen and then you roll the dice and it's like, no, no, that's so, something else. Plot twist time. Um, and, uh, and then like, I think it's a lot of fun just sort of reasoning out like, okay, what does that mean? How can these things, you know, how can this make sense in this situation? Um, and then, and then running with it. I, Wish I like knew the rules, like had them down a little bit better, so so that like that part goes smoother, so that I could you know focus more on the the story and like using the moves. Uh, like I completely forgot I had these uh, had these assets. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it, was, it was our first run yeah. through the system, but yeah, um, and there are quite a lot of assets and moves, but yeah, I thought we did all right with them, and we weaved it in the story as, as much as we could, so. Yeah, it definitely could have gone worse. It's um, the, I think the session you weren't here, we did a lot more using the assets and stuff because we're like, we've, you know, the assets are part of what define your character. So we tried to weave them in as much as possible. Right, yeah. Hey, that's good fun. So. I do think it was kind of funny how like, when we were doing well on roles, that's kind of when the story was the most like, 
not boring, but like even, you know, it was like, okay, yeah, we got to our destination. It was nice. Like maybe you describe yeah. like how nice it was. And then yeah. we got to our next destination. But it was when we had like the misses and stuff is when it was like, everything's going wrong. There's monsters coming at, out at you. Like barns are going up in flames and that sort of thing. So it's definitely seems like a system that the story kind of happens on the weak hits and the misses. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's I think that's like true. Sometimes of PBTA, PBTA in general, yeah. but like, yeah, that's true. like you want to you want to get that seventh and nine often. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this this game it just like amplifies that. Like you want to get a weak hit all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except once in a while, when things are too complicated and too much is going on at, at a time, and then you're like, ah, uh, a strong hit would be good because. I, I'm not. I can't keep track of all the problems. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think we had three failures trying to take a journey, and I'm like, it yeah. gets you like, are we ever going to get home? How long? Is, what the hell is going on? Mm-hmm. But that's going to happen when you're going across the wilderness. You know, it's like, hmm, yeah. we might not actually make it, man. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. All right, I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. It was, it was good playing with everybody. I enjoyed yeah. sort of what, what it, where everyone took the story and how they played their characters and everything. The, the system, you know, did require a bit of learning to sort of get the hang of it, but yeah, yeah. it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I feel like once you know the core loop and at least like know where to look for kind of the stuff, it gets a lot easier. It's just yeah. kind of, like you said, a lot of the more fringe rules like assets or kind of the weird well it reminded me of dungeon world in the sense of a third of the moves you use like two thirds of the time and the other yep. third of them yeah. the other two thirds of moves you only use a third of the time it's yeah it's use uh-huh. use 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 occasionally flick over but yep uh, yeah, yeah and it's easy to forget that those like not often used moves or even like your character moves because they don't they're more like unique situation things yeah whereas like face danger that's an obvious thing. Like that just mm. makes sense how to use it. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we should leave it at that. Thank you all for playing. I guess I'll yeah. stop the recording. Wait, part of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> stop.